Then in continuation, suppose we are asked to obtain obtain nth derivative of let's say we have um y equals this is the function given to us just like what I what I've actually put here x cubed then e raised to the power of 2x. Now this is the question. How to how to obtain an nth derivative for it? Such that if I if if I want to look for y hundred, that means I'll just go ahead and use the formula. Then whenever I see n, I'll put hundred and I get my final answer. So this is how it works. This is how you make use of this theorem. Now listen attentively. When you see this, I would prefer. Okay, before you could know which one to call your u or which one to call your v, it does not affect. But here in this case, suppose I let I put my u to be equals to let's say um, i use i use my u of x to represent this exponential function i'm using this u of x and then um i make v represent x used to the power of three and most especially this v by the time i keep on differentiating it i, I notice that it, it end up giving me zero so that's how to quickly get which one to use this this tends to zero and then this I can easily generate. I can easily um, find um, the uh, how will I say it? Um, the general formula for this. The general formula for this, such that this is u, the initial u, which is u naught, v naught. I can call this one u naught. This is v naught. And then mm -hmm. if I'm to differentiate it once, then that will, that will be u one. That's the first derivative. If I differentiate this thing, that should be two e two x. Do you agree with that? Differentiate your papa does too, then you put everything back. That's how it works. Then the next thing is differentiate it twice. That's u2. You get that now. I'm putting it in the bracket so it will not be like u squared. u2, that is second derivative. If I differentiate this thing again, two times, when I differentiate this, I have two. Two times two is four. Then I'll repeat this exponential back. That's 4e2x. You see, this thing follows a pattern. u always follows a pattern, but v always tends to zero, but it's not all the time. So now, I notice that this thing forms, I can easily generate, um, I can easily find a general formula for this because I notice that here I have 2 to the power of 0, I have 2 to the power of 1, I have 2 to the power of 2, and this is a main fixed. What if I try the third derivative also? Next one, I will differentiate this 2x, that gives me 2, times 4, that is 8, then with that's 8e2x. Did, did you get that clearly now? So if you continue like that, with u4 and that, so I don't know where to stop. What if I come here, since I know that this one will turn me to zero, so wherever I stop, I'll just stop here also. So this is our initial v naught, our initial v. Then the first derivative will now be, when, the, when I differentiate this, I'll have 3 x squared. Then when I differentiate it twice, I will have 6x, right? And then when I differentiate this thing three times, the third derivative will be what? 6. And then the fourth one, when I differentiate the constant, I'll end up having zero. So I'll stop here. So this, that's how to know where to stop. But not all the time. It's not all the time it's it's terminated to zero, not all the time. So now here in this case, if I differentiate this thing again, u4 will give us what? That is 16. Then e raised to the power of what? 2x. Now um it's clearly seen that if you are using this formula here, take note, if you are using some um in some textbook, you see v a minus r or you see u r v a minus r. Wherever you notice that this n is on u, this n is on u. So whatever you are putting, whatever you are actually um, representing with your u, must must uh, it must be a derivative that you can easily generalize. So that is how to know which one to use for u and which one to use for v. You know, here in this case, I actually put n minus r on u. And looking at this question, if I call this to be my u. And I keep on differentiating. I know it will terminate to zero. So can you easily generate? Can you easily find an um, et, um a general formula for it? No, you can't. But if I let this represent my u and I keep on differentiating, I will know that it's going to follow a pattern so that you can easily find a general formula for it in terms of n. So wherever you have n, if you have n on u, make sure that that u must be what you can easily generalize. And if you have n to be on v, then that means Whatever you, are, whatever you are using to represent your v must be 
what it must represent what it and what it did in her life when you when you behave them so that's how it works so yeah in this case um n is on you so i can easily generalize my u by saying if you keep on differentiating this up to nth term sorry up to nth derivative then what will it give you you know yeah i have two four eight sixteen so what's the generalized uh, what's the generalized formula for two four eight sixteen i think two four eight sixteen that forms gp is a geometric progression when you have two comma four comma six sorry two comma four comma eight comma sixteen and initially i even have one that's the first time i actually have one so if i want to generalize this now this follows a geometric progression whereby my first term is a is one and then the common ratio is two right it has a common ratio this thing has ratio that is common two divided by one is two four divided by two is two eight divided by four is two then like that so the nth term of gp of a geometric progression is a r raised power of a minus one such that a is one according to what i have here what is r common ratio is two what do i have left i have n minus one so if I general if I give if I try to find the generalized formula for this, then what I will end up having is two is power of a minus one. But I would have preferred to start from two, four, eight, sixteen. That's very, very fast. Because here that means n start from zero. And I would love to use I would love to use I would have started from here. This is more okay. This is where we start from from the first derivative. So it's better we start from here. So is that you use this generalization or okay? Let me I want to start from u first derivative which is 2, 4, 8, 16. This is preferable. So um I prefer to use this. So a is 2, the first term is 2 in this case, common ratio is 2, right? Normally, and then by the time you find t n equals to a r n plus and the, the nth term, then a is 2, then common ratio is 2, n minus 1. So when you multiply this and this together by the rule of indices, the power will cancel this. I, I only have 2 is power of n left. So when I generalize all this, this gives us what 2 is to the power of what? n. So that when I have n here, I will have n here. So this is the best one. Rather than having n and then you have n minus 1, it works, but this gives the best explanation. So, um, and then the next generalization is that this remain constant all through. u is to the power of 2x appears for everything. So my u n represents 2 is to the power of n e of 2x. So I'll tell you where to use this. You are going to use this in this case. You know, I'll start from zero. Since I'll start from zero, then by the time you simplify this um, series, then you end up adding u n minus zero. That's u n. So what's your u n? Just come here and substitute it. So the next thing for us to do from here is that since since we have u the nth derivative for our u function to be 2 is to the power of n and e is to the power of 2x. So then we recall by Leibniz term, by definition, by definition of Leibniz term, don't forget we are looking for the nth derivative. The nth derivative of the function given to us is equals to the summation of when r starts from 0 to n of n combination r, u raised to the power of n minus r, and v raised to the power of what r. We can complete this statement in a very clear way by putting u of x and v of x. So, I know you want it. But please and please, when you get here, please just calm down and break it down. So, yeah, in this case, this series says that I'll start from zero. That means I will end up having n combination zero, right? n combination zero. Then I have u to the power of n minus zero. That is n. Then I have u to the power of zero, right? Next thing is plus. When r is one, that's n combination one n combination 1, u is to the power of n minus 1, then u is to the power of what? 1. So how will I know when to stop using this series? How will I know when to stop? You know when to stop when you check. Okay, you know, trivially, look at this. The first derivative, second derivative, third one, fourth one. I will stop at v4. That's when, that's when you know when to stop. This is v0, v1. So I will stop at v4. So next thing is, um, please take note, it's not all the time you see this. Some in some textbook you might see this in the bracket, which represents derivative, not just power. So yeah, in this case now, um when r is two, I'll have n combination two, 
u to the power of n minus 2, right? And then I'll have v square. So it does not end here. I will still have n combination 3, u is power of n minus 3, u is power of 3. Next one is n combination 4, u is the power of n minus 4, then v is power of 4. Do I need to continue? No. I stop at v4. Such that all this thing, this thing that I have here, becomes 0. So I only have just 1, 2, 3, 4 things to work with. Do you understand that? So now the next thing to do from here is to substitute. My nth derivative simply implies n combination 0. Please, you have to take note of this. Um, this is just binomial series. All these things you have to know it offers for you to understand this topic clearly. All these combinations, you must understand just this alone. So that you'll be able to flow with the solution. N combination 0 is always 1. The first one is always 1. This one is always, the next one is always N. I want to show you the pattern. This one will now give you N times N minus 1 over because you have two products up here, you have two factorial. Just understand the pattern. That's my own pattern. Then the next thing here is n combination three. N combination three to easily get this or to to recall this is to just be n. Follow the pattern. I use n and n minus one. Now I will now use n n minus one and n minus two. How many product do I have up there? Three. That's three factorial. Here I have just one one thing, so I have one factorial. Here I have no n at all, zero factorial. So that's just the pattern. If I want to get n combination four now, that will be n, n minus one, n minus two, then n minus three. How many products? Four products, then four factorial. So now, without even solving or finding n factorial by n minus zero, I can easily tell you what this one is. This is just one, straight up. What is u n? Now this is where you need it now. U n c t. It is two x power of n e x power of two x. So I'll substitute it. Two n e two x. What is v naught? V0 is the initial V given to us, which is x to the power of 3 times x to the power of 3. So I would prefer you put this in a bracket so that you can see everything clearly. Plus, the next thing is n combination 1. n combination 1 without even solving or simplifying with this logic. n minus 1, n, n combination 1 is just n. You should note that. Just n. And then my u to the power of n minus 1 is what? When you have u n to be equal to 2 n e 2 x what would be u n minus 1 that means wherever i see n i'll put what n minus 1 so then this becomes u is power of n minus 1 will be 2 is the power of wherever i see n put n minus 1 and i have e 2 x this is for my u n minus 1 now what is v1 v1 is the first derivative which is 3 x squared times 3 x squared so put that in a bracket also plus the next term is n combination 2 n combination 2 from the pattern i have 1 i have n you must always remember all this 1 n n n minus 1 over 2 factorial which is 2 okay so then u n minus 2 will give us 2 to the power of n minus 2 the same process just since you you, you have an you have an as um, you have a general we ain't we have n um sorry we have the um general generalized formula here which is in nth form so then if you have u of n minus 2 wherever i see n here just puts n minus 2 that's what i've done so then i have n minus 2 here then i have e 2 x then v square represents this this v square actually represents um the second derivative v2 so that's why i say it's preferably you put everything in a bracket but it's, it's okay this way just take that note that in your mind so now v square represents the second derivative which is what 6x so put that in a bracket always remember so that you can see everything clearly if you don't put everything in a bracket then you, you see a lot of things so you might end up making a mistake so um the next one is the third term which is n combination 3 is n n minus 1 and n minus 2 over 3 factorial 3 factorial is 6 right u n minus 3 will be 2 Put n to the n minus 3 e 2 x right and then what next v3 uh v3 is 6 times 6 so then put everything in a bracket so um looking at this fourth this fifth term i have here now v4 since v4 is zero everything here becomes zero so then it's left to you on how you now you can simplify that's just the major thing if you don't know how to simplify just just forget about it so you have to break this down so to break this down it is very easy 
one thing you need to do is um i can still cut some things so let's just simplify this one by one so yeah in this case how can i write this i prefer to write this as 2n x cubed e 2x right next plus this one also will be written as i prefer to write this as 2n minus 1 3n x squared it's making sense right times 3n x squared and i have e 2x done this for the first one for the second one then next now there is two year one two year three right so whatever i have left here is what i'm having um okay okay let's do this way x is here right so whatever i have left here is two n minus two i'll follow the pattern the exponential index that i have here i have an indices here then this so followed by algebraic with nth n okay three i'll be having two n n minus one of x with the exponential i have there so this is okay but as i say you must know how to simplify you must have a pattern for yourself then one of this this also will be okay six cast six in this case so i'll have n minus two here so no x in this case is that true yes and then whatever i have left is n n minus one i have n minus two then e 2x so this is your final answer or you decide to factor out something so um i noticed that i have e2x to be common e2x and e2x is common to everything so um but one thing you need to take note is okay the highest common factor here is y prime prime sorry y n rather the nth derivative i noticed that the highest common factor i have in all these cases okay or the common factor e2x is a common factor and at the same time this is 2n okay 2n minus 1 2n minus 2 2n minus 3 so the least common factor here is 2n minus 3 2 raised power of n minus 3 right so therefore when you have this to be common so you have to be very very strong i factor out this so um this is 2n minus 3 right so therefore for you to that means this is dividing this everything you have there is dividing this one when you factor out so if this cancels this then what will i have left x cube then what is this thing divided by this thing i will end up having 2n minus 3 divided by this to power of n that's minus um okay if this divide this result i have two is power of n minus three in this case okay that means this is actually dividing this to make it more okay let this divide this since this is the least one so um if this is dividing this this cancel this and then i have x cube okay i have n minus n plus three I hope you get that. This one is divided by this. Let me do it somewhere. It's 2 raised to the power of n x cube, then e 2x divided by this result 2n minus 3 e 2x. This will cancel this, right? So if you are trying to divide this and this together, indices, that's 2 raised to the power of n minus the whole of n minus 3. So when you open this bracket, you have 2 n minus n plus 3. This will cancel this. Then you have 2 cube left. So I don't have any business with this done. Plus, similarly with this also e2x you cancel e2x right so whatever i have left i have 3n left yeah since i have 3n i have 3n what else do i have this is 2n minus 3 this is dividing this i will end up having 2 raised to the power of n minus 1 the negative of this one will give us negative n positive 3 done next thing is plus can you see that i'm doing it one by one then this cancel this also okay i think i have x square here i have x square left yeah so then this cancel this whatever i'll be having now i have 3n n minus 1 what next this is dividing this so when this 2n minus 2 divide 2n minus 2 i end up having 2n minus 2 minus the this result i have here 
and when you open up the bracket, you end up having minus n plus two. So next thing is this last term. But take note, I have an x here. Plus the last term, this cancel this, this cancel this. I have n n minus one. I have n minus two. So it's making sense. Finally, y of n equals e two x two n minus three. N cancel n. I have three to the power of three. Please take note, sorry, x cube is there. I'm sorry for that. So x cube is there from the from the beginning. I, I, I have x cube left, I forgot. Plus, so now this n cancel n, I have minus 1 plus 3, that is 2. I have 2 square, that is 4. 4 times 3, that is 12. n of x square, do you get that now? The next thing is plus. The same thing, n cancel n, 2 plus 3, that is 5. 3 to the power of 5, then that is um, 3 to the power of 5, uh, that is, okay, wait, no, this is minus 2 plus 3, yeah, that is 1, that should be 1, so I don't see it clearly, so that is 3 times 2, then I'll end up having 6n, n minus 1 of x, so it's making sense, then finally we thought n, n minus 1, n minus 2, and you close the bracket, so you see this is very, very interesting. So this gives the final answer to your results. Y n is equals to. Um, you can write this clearly as um, two is to the power of n minus three. E is power of two x of. This is eight s cube. Plus twelve n x square. Plus six n n minus one of x. Plus n n minus one of n minus two. So this gives the n derivative of this function of this product function so um this is how it works um what's the usefulness of this term you know normally in calculus in differentiation i can differentiate this thing once twice three times by the time i ask you to differentiate this thing four times then you should know that there is something <laughs> fire is going on in the bottom so you have to just find um a very easy way to do this and the easiest way is if i want to find it let's say you want to find the fourth derivative now you see this thing will surely help us instead of you dividing it one by one no i'll just tell you that okay y4 the fourth derivative is 2 is to the power of 4 minus that's 2 e 2 x you see this is very very fast then i will end up having 8 x cube n is 4 12 times 4 that is what that is 48 x squared so this is very very fast plus 6 times 4 here now in this case i'll be having 6 times 4 this is 24 so let me just use my calculator straight up i'll be having 6 times 4 then times 4 minus 1 straight up i have 72 here this is 72x then plus when i set in 4 here 4 times 4 minus 1 that is 3 times 4 minus 2, that is 2. So whatever I will have left here is just 24. This is making sense. Then for me, I can just factor out. Is 8 common to everything? Yes, 8 is common. 8 can go in. 8 can go through. Since 8 can go in everything here, factor out 8. The 8 will multiply this to giving you 16. Then you have E2x. Open a bracket. Then, you know, you have actually factored out 8. I'll end up having this. So this will give me 6x squared. 8 in 72, that is 9x plus 3. So this gives the final result. So it's very, very fast. So that's the, that's the usefulness of what Leibniz term. So, so guys, um, this is where I'm going to stop for now um, for on that Leibniz term. So the next video will be based on another, um, another um, aspect. Another aspect. So, so guys, um, you can try this question. Can try this question. Let me just drop one question. I think I have, I have one question here. Um, suppose, suppose we have, suppose we have something like this. Y equals x to the power of three, and I have two x plus one, all squared. Now, which one will you call your usual? Which one will be your usual? Will be your u according to the formula you are using, such that you have n on u. And this is like this for the sharing okay you understand what i'm trying to say so which one will you call your you and which one i'm not stopping for you i just want to give you an hint so here in this case 
trivially, you know, V is the one that will tend to zero trivially. And possibly I said not all the time, but I said you must be must give you what you can easily generalize. If I have x cubed here to be my u, I can easily generalize it. 3x squared. So it's making sense. Again, 6x. Again, it's easier for me to generalize s cubed than to generalize the whole of this when you differentiate it. You get my point now? Because of this n that is there. So I can easily, you see, I have 3, I have 6, I have this. But here in this case, if I call v to be equals to 2, 2 comes down. Because I know that if I keep on differentiating this one, it keeps on reducing. Then I will end up having 0. It's very, very trivial. 2 comes down. Differentiate the brackets. Repeat everything back. Then subtract 1. You see, it's reducing from 2 to 1. Again. This is 4 already. V, this is V1. V2 now will be 4. Differentiate the bracket. That is 2. 2x plus 1 is power of 0. This really add 8. Then V3 should give you 0. You see how it works. So that's why that's I'm trying to give you the pattern. Please, just take note. You should, if you are using this formula, just take note that whatever you are using to represent your U must give you what you can easily generalize. Because I can generalize this. I have 3, I have 6. So I'm very sure, okay, this is also going towards zero. Wow, it's making sense. This also tends to zero. 6x, then this gives us 6, then this gives us zero. So, yeah, in this case, no matter how you use your v or v, you still end up getting the same answer. You get the same answer, okay? So it does not really affect. So I'm just trying to tell you which one um, I is going to um, help you a lot. You know, yeah, in this case now, your when, when you are trying to find your UN now, your generalized term, you know, everything zero, u4, uh, like u, u5, one, two, one, two, three, four. u4 is zero, u5 is zero, u6 is zero, u7 is zero, un also will give you zero. So you can easily generalize this also. But in this case, too, when you generalize, you can call this on your generalized term up to vn. So you still end up getting the same answer. Okay, it does not really affect. So thank you guys. Thanks for watching. Please remember to subscribe to my YouTube channel. I really appreciate it. Thank you.